You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. Now make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button and share this video at the end of the review. Now for an eight-seater SUV which seems to be American-inspired and gangster-esque. Yes, that's right. Today I check out the latest 2023 Hyundai Palisade. You get a choice of two engines. I have the diesel all-wheel drive. Two seating configurations. I have the more social eight-seater. And two trim levels. I have the lower trim level, the Elite. The Palisade was first released to the US market in 2018, and we got it in Australia two years later. Back then, we thought it was a very bold introduction to the Australian market by Hyundai. But it's paid off. Australians seem to be lapping up the Palisade, and Hyundai has seen impressive sales. Even though, as I said, it was an older model that had already been available in other markets for two years. So now we have a refreshed Palisade with design improvements, some new features, and the addition of new tech, including Hyundai Blue Link. So let's dive in and check out what's new in this latest 2023 Palisade from Hyundai. Starting with the design. It still maintains the same tough American feel with a few new tweaks to modernize it. This new dark parametric shield grille with the incorporated Hyundai logo just looks so futuristic. The grille on this Elite is darker than on the Highlander, which in my opinion just looks better. The grille flares up top and the LED headlights are vertically stacked alongside of it as part of the new design. Also, indicator lights are integrated into the grille and only appear when they're active. Side on, you can see the new alloy designs and both trims get 20 inches. The rear remains the most similar to the outgoing model, but still very distinct from its Hyundai siblings, which is cool. Whereas some brands like <coughs> Mazda kind of all look the same, no matter the model. There are now four new premium paint colors to choose from as well. Ooh, that was a very smooth hydraulic opening. Now, as I mentioned, there are two engine choices. You can get a petrol or a diesel. The petrol is a 3.8 litre, which produces 217 kilowatts of power and 355 newton metres of torque. Having that bigger engine and hauling around the big Palisade unfortunately results in a thirstier ride, and the petrol Palisade guzzles 10.3 litres per 100 kilometres. The petrol is also only available as two-wheel drive. That's one of the reasons why this diesel appears to be the better of the two choices. It's a 2.2 litre diesel that produces 147 kilowatts of power and 440 newton metres of torque. It's all-wheel drive and sips 7.3 litres per 100 kilometres. For 2023, the transmission is an updated eight-speed automatic. Yes, that all sounds like a bunch of numbers, but what's the drive like? The drive has actually been significantly improved. It's so much smoother to drive. Hyundai have revised key elements of the transmission, which has meant that despite the Palisade being a huge SUV with a big engine, it's still silky smooth to drive and shifts effortlessly. It does still feel unavoidably boaty around corners at times, but key suspension elements have been improved, resulting in a better handling ride. Engine and road noise is almost non-existent with the windows up, but driving the diesel when you put the window down, you do hear some engine noise. Not much, but it still shows me how impressively quiet the cabin actually is. These larger SUVs, especially with the diesel versions, can feel a little noisy and truck-like, but Hyundai have minimised so much sound in the Palisade with thickening the glass, improved door seals and added insulation. It's just so quiet. Great, so you can get some zen space while driving. The huge dimensions you will notice in tighter city driving, and especially when it comes to parking the Palisade. So you do get a reversing camera, as well as front and rear sensors in this elite trim. The Highlander gives you a surround view monitor 360 degree camera, as well as the blind spot cameras, which we love. I really miss having them here in this elite. So again, maybe the two main reasons to pick the Highlander. Lastly, being the diesel all wheel drive, you do get the multi-terrain mode, which simply using this selector dial lets you choose between putting the car in snow, mud and sand modes. The interior's design flows nicely, being both clean and simple. Once inside, the driver's seat is very comfortable. But there are still some plasticky elements around the place. They're not really in areas that you're going to frequently touch, but up here above the infotainment, this part here. And you know what? The door handles. So I have a vendetta against this door handle because it's pinched me twice already. There are the dual 12.3 inch screens. One is the LCD digital instrument cluster, which is awesome. And the other is your touchscreen navigation and multimedia system. The multimedia system is now paired with a 12 speaker Infinity audio system, which does sound fantastic. The transmission is controlled via these buttons, which allows for that added space down here. Very handy. There's now a more powerful 15 watt wireless phone charger. 
Now that's up from the 5 watt, which didn't do too much if you wanted a quick charge on shorter trips. The new faster wireless charger is now complemented with five USB-C outlets and a single USB-A, which we still had to use to connect Apple CarPlay. I guess it's good to see both available because plenty of manufacturers will only give you a choice of one or the other. Also, I love these USB-Cs on the sides of the front seats. As I mentioned earlier, you get the choice between two seating configurations, the II Captain chairs or this eight-seater. Both offer accommodating rows. It's the little details Hyundai do so well, like this little step on the second row to get in and the refined assuredness the second row seats drop with. In this Elite, front seats are heated. In the Highlander, both first and second row seats are heated and ventilated. Some international models also get heated third row seats, but we don't here in Oz, but they do recline. There are plenty of interior features, but we just wanted to focus on the newer ones. So do check out our earlier Palisade reviews as well. Okay, probably the most significant update to the 2023 Palisade is the addition of Blue Link. Via an app on your smartphone, it allows you to remotely lock or unlock doors, open or close windows, and adjust climate settings. You can check your car's fuel or electric status, like how much range remains, monitor your car's location, driving distance, average top speed, and so on. It's a game changer for Hyundai and now opens up a whole realm of possibilities. It really deserves its own review and that's something we will revisit later in detail. Blue Link comes as free for the first five years with the purchase of a new vehicle. In terms of safety, 2023 sees the addition of some new safety features as well as Hyundai improving upon some of the existing safety features in the outgoing Palisade. The key new safety tech across the range includes multi anti-collision brake or MCB and rear parking collision avoidance assist. The safe exit assist used to be only on the Highlander trim but now it's across the range. New features available only to the Highlander include the digital centre mirror and reverse light guide. Pricing for the 2023 Palisade starts at $65,900 MLP for the two-wheel drive petrol Elite. This diesel all-wheel drive in the Elite trim costs $5,000 more at $69,900 and if you wanted to jump up to the Highlander diesel all-wheel drive, it costs $79,900. Hyundai rolled the dice when they brought the Palisade to Australia. I mean, it was a car clearly tailored to a specific international market. But hey, turns out we have a taste for it here as well. The 2023 Palisade is now modernised and the addition of Blue Link makes it an even better choice. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Now, which Palisade would you prefer? The petrol or the diesel? Or if not, what other car in this category are you considering? Let us know in the comments below and you'll see me in my next review.